What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. A while back, I made a video discussing certain Pokémon names and the improper ways that people pronounce them. I enjoyed that process of figuring out what goes into a Pokémon's name, so I thought I would look into some more controversial pronunciations and see why they're named what they are. So, welcome to Pokémon Etymology! The first one is one that should have been on the list last time, because really it is inexcusable, and that is Snorunt. It irks me to no end, because it's an ice-type Pokémon. One would think that snow would have something to do with it. I know that it's a hat sort of thing, but it's not a nightcap, so there's no reason that Snore should show up anywhere. Especially since it's literally classified as the Snow Hat Pokémon. You know, the cold thing that it's related to? There's no reason not to understand that this Pokémon is named Snowrunt, despite the fact that I've heard numerous other people in the Pokémon community say it poorly. There are just enough Pokémon with King in their name for a full team, but there's one from the Hoenn region that sometimes people seem to stumble over. If you've ever called this Pokémon Slay King, could you please explain your reasoning to me? This came out way before any stupid internet terminology of slaying things, so he's not the king of that. Clearly, it's the king of slack, as in how lazy it is all the time, down to its sluggish ability. I've never heard anyone call the first stage Slaykoth, so they obviously know it's a sloth that slacks. So why in the world would that not be the case for the final stage, when it's almost exactly the same? So can we please just agree to leave slaying for the dragons? And of course you have somewhat common ones with letters being added or overlooked, like calling the ruby mascot Groundon, just by glancing over it. But there's one other Hoenn Pokémon that I legitimately don't understand. Lyleep. This Pokémon is a grass type, an extinct species, mind you, but its name is clearly derived from the lily flower. Lyleep makes it sound like it's a lying ballerina. And just like Snowrunt, its species name is the Sea Lily Pokémon, so why not pronounce it that way in the name as well? There are also some simple inspirations for certain Pokémon, but for whatever reason you don't pay enough attention to even notice what's going on behind the scenes. I fell victim to this with the Trash-themed Pokémon. I don't necessarily hate it as much as other people, but I never really gave it a lot of attention, which is what led me to call it Garbodor. Only once I looked into it more did I appreciate its true name of Garboder, combining garbage and odor, which obviously stems from garbage being quite odorous and not in a pleasant way. So even if you don't care for a Pokémon, you can still take a minute to learn its name properly and maybe give you some more perspective. Another one that I was guilty of not observing properly was this little one. Since I preferred its counterpart, I quickly just read its name and dubbed it Vullaby. You know, just like Magby, because it's a baby. Makes sense. There's no reason that couldn't be the right pronunciation, but only later did I put together that the intention was for it to be Vullaby, and my mind melted. That's so much better than the way that I had been saying it, and it's a perfect cross between Vulture and Lullaby, which also sticks to the baby theme, but in a much more clever and better sounding way. So while I do appreciate the name a lot more, it doesn't really make me more inclined to want to use this Pokémon. Let's look at another Unova Pokémon. I've heard many people refer to this Pokémon as Cofagrigus. It doesn't really sound pleasant or like it means anything, so let's try and uncover the secrets of this ancient relic. The base for this Pokémon's name comes from sarcophagus, which is the name for the types of large Egyptian caskets used in tombs like they show in the movies. Or if it makes it easier for you, just call it a coffin. Either way, that would make this Pokémon's name Cofagrigus. And it is Cofagrigus because the second half is a corruption of the word... No, egregious. Which means notorious in a bad way further fitting into the ghost typing. Another one that took me some time to learn was Dino. The name makes perfect sense because it is itself a dinosaur. 
so calling it Dino or Dino or something doesn't jive. It's also a huge disservice when you take into account the rest of its line. Now, I knew how to count in German, but for whatever reason, I never put together that these Pokémon utilized Ein, Zwei, and Drei in their names. Just like the legendary birds Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres use the Spanish numbers. Realizing the pronunciations in their native language, calling it Hydregion is especially bad. It's a combination of Hydra, Dry, and Dragon, so it's Hydragon. Hail Hydra. Really, the 1-2-3 punch works even better with Dinos, Vilas, and Hydragon because it denotes the number of heads so you never get confused. And one final Unova Pokémon is one that they predicted all the way back in Gen 1. I've heard this called Mana I don't know how many times. It may not be the best evidence, but first of all, that just sounds so unpleasant. But as far as facts, a part of this Pokémon's origins and lore relate to the moon. Not to say that its name's inspiration is simply drawn from moon a uh, but I do have to believe that it is derived from Luna, especially since it evolves with the Moonstone, and the fact that its evolution is Musharna. I don't know what a Muna could possibly be, but at least Muna would have some kind of thought put behind it. This one I'm presenting more as a question, because I've heard this Pokémon called Claw Itzer, which is fine, but I've always said Clawitzer. It's a subtle difference that may not mean very much, but I feel like rolling the two words together not only flows better, but definitely combines Claw and Howitzer, the heavy artillery that inspires its name. I might be making something out of nothing between Claw Itzer and Clawitzer, but weigh in on this one with a comment. There are many, shall we say, interesting design choices for the Ultra Beasts. And one of those is this one's name. There are a number of possible ways to say this one, but the correct method is Nihiligo. And it makes perfect sense when looking at the story in the Alola games. Nihilism could pretty much be described as the notion that life is meaningless in some way, and ego, of course, is one sense of self-worth. So when you look at Lusamine and her relationship with these creatures in particular, it all sort of comes together especially after seeing what she did to her daughter, and manipulated the entire Aether Foundation just to get back to her obsession. And as we approach the end, I feel like maybe we've been saying this Pokémon wrong for years on end. Nobody seems to like Delibird, really, and even if they do, it's almost impossible to use one, thanks to Present. But its whole shtick is delivering presents to all the little girls and boys, so is that what its name is supposed to be? Is it meant to have the emphasis shifted slightly so that we call it delivered? As in a bird that has delivered us something? Again, I don't know if that was their intention, but it would certainly work. And I could understand it a lot more than sounding like it ran a deli for some reason. It may not be the biggest distinction, but again, share your thoughts on this one. I mean, it's not like it's as controversial as the creator of the whole Pokémon universe. It's Arceus. It just is. Whether it's from Archangel or Archbishop or whatever you want to draw from, it's just Arceus. Case closed. So, those are some interesting cases of Pokémon etymology. Which Pokémon names have interested you? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to leave a like. Share this video and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!